okay so yeah um we took a two week break from this because of my conferences and everything so let's resume today so harshal you had asked me uh, like how to represent uh, uh, like a reaction the change in reaction uh, how do you express it with the change in temperature and uh, pressure right or can you just uh, post the question again on the uh, chat wheel just to be sure okay show mathematically temperature and pressure affecting the rate of reaction okay fine we'll do that so how does uh, so how does temperature and pressure affect the rate of reaction fine let's take a very simple example itself and we'll see how we can see so a to b a very simple straightforward uh, first order reaction so first order reaction and you know you can write the rate minus ra as k c u so you are following right harshal okay so minus ra is equal to kca now this k you can write it as k0 e raised to minus e by rt into ca right so from this you have the temperature term so now if you vary this temperature your rate constant will change and if your rate constant changes your reaction rate will also change right so now we just showed how you know temperature affects the rate of reaction now how does the pressure affect this rate of reaction the same thing you know we have this uh, rate as you know minus ra is equal to minus kca now assume this is a gaseous system or a gaseous uh, you know reaction so for gaseous reactions you have this ideal uh, gas laws right so pv is equal to nrt so if you take this b this side we will have p is equal to n by v into rt and this n by v is what concentration c c into rt right now you can extend this to partial pressures as well so pa is the partial pressure of a and that will be equal to ca which is the concentration of a into r t right so from this you know you can write ca is equal to what pa by r t okay so just substitute this ca here so minus ra will be what k into ca and ca is pa by rt so so now you have both the you know pressure term as well as temperature term right so that means what if you vary the pressure or if you vary the temperature or if you vary both this reaction rate will change with respect to whatever the variation that is occurring for pressure and temperature so this is how you can represent mathematically how uh, you know reaction rate varies with temperature and pressure understood
for nth order pretty much the same thing you know what will be the nth order reaction let's say r is equal to k c a raised to n so this c a you just write it as k into p a by r t the whole raised to n that's all right so if you have a reaction like this say you know minus r a is equal to k c a into c b you can also write it c a let's like we'll take the general case c a raised to n c b raised to m let's say this is some you know uh, p th order reaction whatever the order is whatever n m whatever it is you can write this as you know k into c a which is you know p a by r t the whole raised to n and c b you write it as p b by r t the whole raised to m right so you can represent any order reaction like this but the assumption here is that it is a gaseous reaction only for gaseous reactions you can represent uh, you know your concentration in terms of uh, you know partial pressures for gas uh, gas reactions you can do this for liquid and solid reactions you can't do this so we'll uh, so i'm not sure how we can um, you know find the uh, pressure variation for uh, you know reaction rate for liquid and solid reactions but for gaseous reactions this is how you do it Fine, if uh, this is clear, uh, we can move on. Shall we move on? Okay. Fine. So, uh, last class we were looking into catalysis. Right, we just started the very basics of catalysis. So, we saw, you know, how what are what all different steps are there in a catalytic reaction you know the seven different steps in a catalytic reaction and we imagined three scenarios so the first scenario is where both the diffusion steps the internal and external diffusion steps are uh, very fast that means any of you know adsorption surface reaction or desorption can be rate determining and then there was scenario two uh, you know where external diffusion is uh, rate de uh, determining the, and the other steps are uh, very fast and the scenario 3 is where internal diffusion can be rate limiting and you know the other uh, steps are very fast and we looked at how we can write the uh, you know rate of reaction equations when adsorption was rate limiting right so we uh, took this uh, scenario 1 and we so we looked into a very basic example a giving b with s as the vacant side we saw how you know s uh, what all ways s can get i mean the reactants can get absorbed on the catalyst active side and you know we wrote a lot of you know equations and so on so we'll start with the continuation of this so what we have to do is you know so basically pretty similar to what we did last class so we have these uh, you know five different steps internal diffusion oh sorry it starts with external diffusion right So external diffusion, then comes internal diffusion, then comes, you know, surface reaction, okay, <laughs> I'm missing steps here. <laughs> When it comes adsorption and comes surface reaction then comes you know desorption 
then again you know internal diffusion happens and then you know external diffusion happens so that's how these seven steps occurs in a catalytic reaction so we majorly focused on adsorption being the rate determining last class so as i said the adsorption can be single site adsorption or dual site absor adsorption and we looked into how we can write the uh, you know different equations for uh, all these uh, different types of adsorption that can happen so now what i'll do is i'll do the same but for surface reaction and desorption being the rate limiting steps and uh, i'll uh, try to keep it brief as possible so according to schedule actually we are supposed to uh, finish uh, no, chemical reaction engineering by last class itself but since we had to cancel two classes i'll try to finish uh, this uh, catalysis part uh, today itself so i'll just brief through all these uh, you know concepts and we'll also try to do one or two problems so anyways so we'll uh, start with the surface reaction so surface reaction you know it can also be of three uh, different kinds of reaction that can happen single site reaction model dual site reaction model or there is a special case called la radial model okay so in single site so if we take an example of the reaction a giving b then the uh, steps will be what a will first get adsorbed to a vacant site let's represent vacant site as b and it will become you know ab which is the activated complex then this activated complex ab will react to form the product bv then this b bv will get desorbed to form b plus vacant site b right and uh, this is our reaction step so this reaction a single site model what it says is so if we have you know let's say these are the activation active sites then a will come a will get adsorbed here and it will form you know av and this will react and b will also form on the same active site and then it will get desorbed and so on so basically this is a single site mechanism now a dual site mechanism okay we have to write the equation also for this right so av reversibly giving bv then the rate of reaction will be k1 cav minus k minus 1 cbv right so k1 k minus 1 so this will be the you know overall rate of reaction for this reversible reaction step right now if we do the same for a dual site mechanism so in a dual site let's take the example you know a plus b giving c plus d so what happens is let's assume both a and b are getting adsorbed so i'm not i'm not going to write the adsorption steps i'll just directly write the reaction step a will get adsorbed to a vacant site to form av and b will also get adsorbed with the vacant site to form bv and this will react in a reversible manner to give cv and dv so if we have active sites like this so a will be adsorbed on this b will be adsorbed on this and this will undergo reaction and you will get you know c and d which are also adsorbed on the active sites then later the c and d will desorb from the active site and it will just go into the bulk so if we write an overall uh, equation for this 
no R reaction, it will be so K1 and K minus 1. So K1 C into A C A V and C B V minus K minus 1 C C V C D V. So this will be your overall rate of reaction for this. Now this special case was LA radial. So LA radial also pretty much uh, you know you can take the same reaction here A plus B giving uh, we will just take one product C to avoid complication. So you have A plus B giving C only one of these reactants will get adsorbed. Okay, let's assume A is the one that is getting adsorbed. That means B won't get adsorbed. So the adsorption and reaction will be happening like this. So you have vacant sites. A will get adsorbed, but B will stay in the bulk itself. It won't get adsorbed. And, and this will reversibly react and it will give you the product. Now the product can either be adsorbed on the uh, you know active site or it can also be you know formed separately from the active site that depends on you know each and every individual cases so this is a special type of uh, reaction that happens in catalysis and that is called as an LA radial mechanism or model okay so if we write the overall rate of reaction for this rate of reaction will be k again k1 and k minus 1 so k1 c into av because a is the only thing that is getting adsorbed and cb minus k minus 1 c c v Or you know this can also be you know just CC depending on depending on whether the you know your product is getting absorbed or not. But also one more thing that you should notice as I just said you know if you assume these are in gaseous phase or these reactions are gaseous in nature, you can write this rate of reaction as K1 CAV into Pb which is the partial pressure of B minus K minus 1 C C B. Right, so this C will become Pb, partial pressure of B. Right. Okay. So this is just the brief equations for <coughs> surface reactions and the pretty much the same thing you can apply for desorption steps as well. So if you have uh, let's say the same A giving B, the steps will be you know A getting adsorbed to form AV, this AV will react to form BV, then BV will desorb to form B plus B. So this is your desorption step. Right. And desorption is pretty much, you know, the same thing. You can write the rate of desorption as, uh, let's say this is K1 and reverse blue is K minus 1. K1 CBV minus k minus 1 cb into c so this is pretty much the you know set of equations that you need to conjure up when you are trying to solve a catalysis uh, reaction now there is something called as a langmuir henselwood approach
So that is what you will be doing with all these uh, reactions that you just, uh, you know, conjured up. So, you know, if if you are given a system, let's say A giving B, you can write all these various steps. You know, adsorption will be A plus B giving A V, and then the reaction will be A V giving uh, B V, and the desorption step will be B V reversibly giving B plus B. Right. So based on different uh, conditions and different questions, any one of these can be rate determining step. So that is where we will be using this Langmuir Henselwood approach. So in this Langmuir Henselwood approach, the first step is to assume a sequence of mechanism. So this is our sequence of mechanism that we did for uh, this simple reaction A giving B, which is A getting adsorbed on a vacant active site and A on the uh, vacant active site, which is basically an activated complex. It will uh, undergo reaction and reversibly give the product, which is also an activated complex. That means the product is also like adsorbed on the active site. Then the product from the active site will get desorbed to give the uh, you know product and a vacant site so this is our sequence of mechanism for most of the uh, general cases okay now the second step is write the rate of each step assuming it is reversible so that is also uh, what we just did. So we as we the first step is we are we had to assume three steps, which is you know adsorption. So this is adsorption, then the surface reaction, and then the diffusion. Uh, sorry, uh, desorption. So we assumed the sequence of these three steps. We wrote the reaction rate equation for it. So you can write the rate equation for adsorption. So here this adsorption will be, you know, my uh, R adsorption is equal to K1 CACB minus K minus 1 CAB, right? Then the reaction, uh, reaction will be K1 CAB minus K minus 1 CBB. Now we will write it as K2 to avoid confusion. And this desorption, R desorption will be k3 cbv minus k cb cv k3 cb cv so you have you can write these three rate of uh, reactions based on these three elementary steps that you assume so that is step number 2 and the step number 3 is assume one of these steps to be rate determining So you can assume any of these to be rate determining. In most of the cases for your gate exams, it will be given which is the rate determining step. So you usually don't have to uh, assume anything, but the Langmuir Henselwood approach is like this. So you assume one of these to be rate determining and the, uh, you know continue with the fourth step, which is formulate the overall rate law. And we have to replace all the terms like CV. So how we replace it, we'll uh, see in a, with an example question. But anyways, so what we have to do as the fourth step is, uh, after assuming one of these steps to be a rate determining, we just uh, try to formulate the rate law by replacing one of the, uh, not one of the, by replacing all the CV terms or concentration of vacant site terms. Okay. And from this, yeah, from uh, this uh, four steps, you can find the rate law and you can even, you know, find the relation between 
rate and pressure so you uh, as i said you know if you have these terms ca cb and so on you can write it as pa pb which are the partial pressure of pressures of a and b and by using these uh, you know approach you can find a relation between the rate and the pressure of the system and the final step is to just compare it with the raw data so usually these uh, the last step is uh, not required when it comes to questions specifically from gate you might not need to uh, bother about that much but the approach is pretty much uh, same for any case so first you assume a set of steps then you try to write the rate equations for each of these steps assuming they are reversible then assume one of the one of these steps to be rate determining and using that try to formulate a rate law overall rate law and thus using this rate law you try to find a relation between the rate of reaction and pressure and then compare it with the data that you have so this is the langmuir henselwood approach and also in the last class i have mentioned so here you had you know adsorption reaction and desorption as the three possible steps that can be rate determined because you said that diffusion is very fast and they can't be rate determining right so let's say adsorption is rate determining that means the rate of reaction and rate of desorption can be taken as zero so taking these two as zero you find the terms corresponding to you know cav cbv and so on and cv also and to find cv you take the total side balance the total side side balance will be c total is equal to cav plus cbv plus you know c vacant now this is just for this uh, very simple reaction a given b right so this will be the uh, side balance for that and let's say if you have something like an inert as well with a an inert is also getting adsorbed like this so i plus v giving iv so if it is also getting adsorbed then you will have a term ci as well sorry iv okay so this is the total side balance and using all this you can you know find the overall rate law so you can find the values for cv and all the cav cbv terms from these two conditions which is you know the rate equal to zero and the side balance so equation 1 and equation 2 so use d2 to uh, find or eliminate the terms cv cav cbv and so on and then you know substitute everything in rate of adsorption okay because rate of adsorption is not equal to zero because it is rate determining so that is where you have to substitute all these values and finally you will find the you know overall rate okay so this is basically the uh, you know brunt of scenario 1 where you know any of adsorption desorption and uh, reaction can be rate limiting now scenario 2 is where external diffusion can also be rate limiting so it is either in scenario to you can have either external diffusion as the rate limiting or the reaction as the rate limiting everything else you know adsorption desorption and internal diffusion these are not rate limiting and you can take their uh, rate as zero so this is scenario 2 
okay so i'll i'll give a brief introduction to scenario 2 as well anyways so assume you have a particle like this or a catalyst uh, let's say so on the surface the concentration of a is c a s okay so this is the bulk of a and let's say this is c a and you know there is a fluid that is flowing like this so basically in this scenario too what happens is both reaction kinetics and mass transfer that is placing taking place so reaction kinetics is where you know the surface reaction can be rate limiting mass transfer basically you know external diffusion okay so rate per unit area rate per unit area let's take it as r r1 this is basically what ra by area so what is the unit of ra mole per meter cube second this is divided by meter square so that is basically what mole per meter second and this is basically flux na okay and by fick's law or mass transfer basically we must have learnt about this flux na is equal to kc into cab minus cas so cab is this so this is according to your mass transfer now according to your um, kinetics ra is equal to kca right and if we somehow take something like r1 is equal to k double dash ca so as i said this r1 is basically you know ra by area so rate of reaction per unit area and this will be k dash into ca and this k dash is the modified you know rate constant k by area let's say okay so yeah so now r overall will be k double dash into cas which is the concentration of a on the surface so this r overall is basically equal to r1 or this rate okay this is cas sorry and this is equal to na so basically you know just a lot of mathematical manipulation and so on basically what it comes down is k double dash into cas will be kc into cab minus cas because r1 is equal to na so from this we can find a term for cas right so cas will be equal to kc into cab by k double dash plus kc and now we just said r overall for the overall rate of reaction is basically r1 and that is k double dash into cas and this k double dash cas just substituted for cas k double dash kc cab by k double dash plus kc 
just uh, divide this k double dash k c in the denominator you will get c a b by 1 by k c plus 1 by k double dash now this 1 by k c is called as mass transfer resistance or basically this is the resistance to diffusion resistance of diffusion and this is you know resistance of reaction okay so we can have three different cases case one where kc is very very much greater than k double dash so that means you know resistance of uh, this diffusion is very very less than resistance of reaction okay so that means what resistance of diffusion is less means diffusion will happen very fast diffusion will occur very fast and reaction will be occurring very slow so what does that mean reaction is rate determining because it is the slower step out of the two right this is just you know substituting these uh, different cases on this equation c a b by 1 by k c plus 1 by k double dash now you can have the other two cases as well you know the case 2 is k double dash very much greater than k c that is the yeah so that means r diffusion is very much greater than r reaction or here reaction will happen very fast and diffusion will happen very slow and this will be rate determinant and case 3 is where k double dash is equal to k c so both are in equal uh, values and that means you know both both these reactions have control over the reaction so both external diffusion and surface reaction have control so this is also called as intermediate control okay yeah so basically this is the uh, gist of the scenario 2 where external diffusion can also be part of uh, you know controlling the rate so what we'll do is we'll uh, stop the concepts here i think we might need one more class for uh, completing the remaining portion okay fine so anyways what we'll do is we'll uh, stop the uh, uh, concepts for this and we'll try to solve one problem because i think it's almost uh, 6 45 now so i think if we try to solve one problem then if we have time we can look into the uh, other concepts as well so the remaining concepts are only this scenario 3 which is basically where internal diffusion can also be rate limiting and inside this only you have a uh, you know value called as delay modulus and effectiveness factor
right so yeah the, this is uh, for the scenario 3 and after this there is one small portion called catalyst deactivation So with these two portions, uh, CRE will be more or less uh, complete. We must have covered all the uh, portions in CRE. Um, what we'll do is we'll do one problem now. And uh, if time permits, we'll look into these uh, two concepts as well and see if we can, uh, if we can uh, you know, squeeze in one more problem with regards to delay modulus and effectiveness factor. Right. So let's... Uh, move on to problems but before that uh, I know this is I'm just uh, rushing through these concepts but I hope uh, it is clear to both of you if uh, if you have any doubts uh, just uh, please ask me I am okay to like uh, repeat all these things again so it's fine so everything clear so far Fine then, let's uh, move on to a problem. Just uh, go through this question. We'll uh, see. So this is based on this uh, LA radial mechanism that I just went through a few minutes ago. So this is also uh, this is a catalytic question. So basically, a vapor phase catalytic reaction happens, and they are asking us to find the overall rate of reaction in terms of total pressure P. So let's see how we can solve this. There's a question from gate 2014 from chemical engineering question number 38 a vapor phase catalytic reaction Q plus R giving S follows radial mechanism where R and S are not adsorbed. Initially the mixture contains only the reactants in equimolar ratio. The surface reaction step is rate controlling with constants A and B the initial rate of reaction minus RO in terms of total pressure PT is given by dash and the four options are given as here. So this is a question from catalysis part in chemical reaction engineering and the reference NPTEL lecture can be found in lecture 2 steps in catalytic reaction absorption desorption and reaction chemical reaction engineering 2 by Professor Sanjay M. Mahajani, Professor Ganesh A. Vishwanathan, Professor A. K. Suresh from Department of Chemical Engineering, IIT Bomb. So here, the reaction given to us is in vapor phase and that is Q plus R giving S. And this follows LA radial mechanism. And in the question, they have mentioned that only Q is getting adsorbed. R and S are not getting adsorbed. So based on this, we'll try to formulate the different steps in the reaction and their corresponding rates according to langmuir henselwood approach. So here, Q plus 
are giving S is our overall reaction and Q is the only thing that is getting adsorbed. So the adsorption step will be Q plus V reversibly giving QV where V is the con vacant site, vacant active site. Then the reaction step will be QV plus R giving S plus V. Since the product is already in a desorbed state, there is no desorption step. So there are only two steps here. Step number one, which is the adsorption step and step number two, which is the reaction step. So we can write the corresponding rate equations as well. So if we write, you know, rate of adsorption, it will be, let's take it as K A and K minus A as the rate constants for this adsorption step and the reaction, let us take it as K B and K minus B. So, for the rate of uh, adsorption, the overall rate of adsorption can be written as Ka into Cq Cv minus K minus A Cqv. And the rate of reaction can be written as Kb Cqv Cr minus K minus B C S C B. Now the concentrations of uh, you know C Q C R and C S we can be it can be written in terms of their partial pressures as well. So if we write the reaction rates in terms of partial pressure we can write rate of adsorption as K A P Q C V minus K minus A C Q V and rate of reaction as K B P R C Q V minus K minus B P S C V. Okay, so let us take this as equation. 1 and equation 2. Now, one more equation we can write the total side balance. This will be Ct that is equal to Cv, the vacant site concentration, plus Cqv, which is the concentration of the adsorbed reactant Q or the concentration of the are uh, activated active sites. So let's take it as equation 3. Now, here it is mentioned that reaction is rate determined. So that means we can take rate of adsorption as 0. So that means K A P Q C V minus K minus A C Q V is equal to 0. So from this we can write we can write the equation in terms of C Q V as C Q V is equal to K A by K minus A P Q into C V. Now this K A by K minus A will give you the equilibrium constant Ka because Ka is the forward rate constant and the K minus A is the backward reaction rate constant and the ratio of the forward to the backward reaction rate constant will give you the equilibrium constant capital Ka. So Cqv K 
can be written as capital K A P Q into C V. Now what we can do is we can find the term for C V by using the side balance. So from equation 3 the side balance C T will be C V plus C Q V. And we can substitute for CQV as CV plus KA into PQCV. So from this if we rearrange, we can write the term CV separately. So CT will be CV into 1 plus KA PQ or CV will be equal to CT by 1 plus K A P Q. So let us take this as equation 4 and this as equation 5. Now we will substitute these values for C Q V and C V in our rate determining step which is our reaction rate. So, our reaction is, uh, will be the rate determining step. So, that will be R overall and that will be equal to KB PR CQB minus K minus B PS CV. So, substituting for CQV and CV, we get Uh, Harshal, your mic is unmuted. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. So, what we'll do is we'll substitute. C, Q, V and C, V in this equation. So, R overall will be K, B, P, R into C, Q, V and C, Q, V is C, T. Oh, sorry. So, R overall will be equal to KB PR CQV minus K minus B PS into CV and that we substitute for CQ, CQV and CV will get KB PR CQV is KA PQ and CV minus K minus B PS into CV and CV will be CT by 1 plus KA into PQ. Now we substitute this CV here as well. So we will have KB PR K A P Q into C V that is C T by 1 plus K A P Q minus K minus B into P S C T by 1 plus K A P Q. So we can take these two terms out. So C T by 1 plus K A P Q into KB into KA PR PQ minus K minus B to PS. So this will be our overall reaction rate. Now they, they said that initially only 
the feedstocks are present present or the reactants are present so initially only q and r are present that means s is zero initially so if we write overall reaction rate at initial stages r zero then here ps will be equal to zero so in our overall reaction rate at initial stages at t equal to zero this ps term will get cancelled so our new reaction rate at the initial time t equal to zero will become minus r zero equal to k b k a p r p q c t by one plus k a p q. Now if we take k b into k a to c t as a constant a and k a as b we'll get this initial initial rate as minus r0 is equal to a into p r p q by 1 plus b p q okay so now since they have given in the question that r and q are equimolar in the system so that means we can take pr equal to pq and that will be equal to the pressure pt so what we can do is we can substitute pt in terms of pr and pq and we'll get our initial rate minus r0 as a into pr into pq which is pt into pt that is pt square by 1 plus b into pq and pq will be pt so b into pt so our initial rate equation will become minus r0 equal to a into pt square by 1 plus b into pt now this is our required initial rate and this is the same as the option C given in the question. So our required answer here is option C minus R0 equal to A into Pt square by 1 plus B into Pt. So that is our initial rate of reaction in terms of total pressure for this given question. Is this clear? <coughs> So basically what we did here, you know, this is pretty much the same concepts that we were applying, um, you know, for the last few slides we were seeing how to write the equations and everything, right? So this is how you apply it. So you, uh, you do this in the langmuir henselwood way, you assume the different steps for the given system. Here the different steps are only adsorption and reaction because they said that desorption does not happen here because S is not getting adsorbed. So the product that is forming is already in the desorbed state. So there is no desorption step here. So based on the system that you are uh, trying to solve, you assume a series of steps uh, you know, for the system and you write the reaction rate equations for these steps assuming that they are reversible in nature. And when you do that, 
you take one of those steps as the rate determining here in this question they have given that the reaction rate uh, step reaction step is the rate controlling step so that means the adsorption step the rate of adsorption can be taken as zero so we took that as zero and using that we found a term for cv and the adsorbed reactant cqv and we eliminated these terms cv and cqv from our main uh, you know overall reaction rate equation and the overall reaction rate equation here is basically the rate equation for the surface reaction step so that is basically our aim in these questions so whatever is our rate determining step so wait so whatever is our rate determining step so that rate of this rate determining step will be the overall reaction rate and that is not equal to zero but everything else you can take the rate equal to zero so in the last question the surface reaction step was a rate determining step so that reaction rate is not equal to zero and that reaction rate is the overall reaction rate for that uh, system so whatever was the remaining uh, steps uh, the adsorption was the remaining step in that last question so rate of adsorption you can take it as zero and using this concept that you know whatever is not the rate determining step you can take their rates as zero and also you take the side balance ct is equal to you know cav plus cbv plus so on plus c vacant <clears throat> so using these two concepts that the rate of a non rate determining steps as zero and the side balance ct equal to so and so you find terms for cv cav cbv and so on and you eliminate these terms from your overall rate reaction overall reaction rate so that is basically the objective of these sorts of questions when they are asked in you know this manner right so for that only we are writing you know all those uh, reversible uh, reaction uh, reactions and their uh, rate equations and you know doing all these mathematical manipulations so our basic aim is to just eliminate these terms from overall reaction rate and after eliminating whatever term you are getting will be your overall reaction rate so that is basically the aim of this last question right okay fine then uh, we'll stop here but as i said we still need to uh, you know look into our scenario 3 which is the internal diffusion and by internal diffusion the major uh, focus of that is the tele modulus so tele modulus will be the major focus and uh, you know the effectiveness factor we'll try to solve a couple of questions also based on this tele modulus and effective factor and once that is done a very uh, small topic is left which is the deactivation of catalyst so these two portions are remaining in cre uh, we'll try to cover these two portions tomorrow uh, in the next class i mean which is uh, the coming next monday and we'll try to solve uh, you know two or three problems as well based on this uh, internal diffusion and uh, also you know maybe if, if possible we'll look into one more problem based on this uh, uh, the scenario 1 and scenario 2 
so i'll uh, see if we if we can get any such problems and with that i think we can conclude uh, cre and after cre uh, i want to start mechanical operations so if everything goes well we can start mechanical operations by the start of january or if things go very well we can give a brief introduction of mechanical operation uh, during the next class itself right so yeah uh, that's it for today thank you for uh, joining and i'll uh, see you all next class